place in Syria. The president says it is retaliation, that it was done in defense of the United States, and he is receiving political support. But did he have the legal authority? It supposedly wasn't there for the same action by President Obama in 2013. What changed? Is there a line anymore that a president cannot cross when it comes to using lethal force around the world? These are heavy questions. They matter a lot. Now, one of the men who took an oath to answer these questions joins us right now. Former Democratic vice presidential nominee, Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia, a member of the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committees. Uh, Senator, good to have you. I want to play Thanks, for Chris. you what Senator Rubio, who supports what just happened, just said on New Day about why it was legal, not just the right thing to do. Listen. It was the right move. First of all, it was legal. It was in furtherance of both uh, enforcing an agreement that the United States and Russia were a party to for the removal of chemical weapons. It was in furtherance of, a, uh, of the treaty that, the, that they signed. It was in furtherance of international law that says that you cannot use chemical weapons against anyone, not to mention innocent civilians. Now, those may be compelling political arguments, but do you think they are compelling legal arguments? What agreement well, well, empowered the United States to take military action against Syria? What international law allows the United States without UN resolution to unilaterally strike out against a sovereign? Uh, Chris, there is no legal justification for this. I think from a moral standpoint, absolutely, I agree with Senator Rubio. It was the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do to, to try to deter Bashar al-Assad from war crimes. And remember, I voted to use military action against Syria in August of 2013. Senator Rubio voted against it back then when Bashar al-Assad did exactly the same thing. But I said the president has to come to Congress. And Donald J. Trump, citizen Trump at that time, said exactly the same thing. A president has to go to Congress. So President Trump's doing this, finally waking up to the atrocities in Syria is a good thing, but he should not have done this without coming to Congress. I'm on the Armed Services and Foreign Relations Committees. I'm the, the, the Democratic lead on the committee over the Middle East. I was not consulted. I heard about this on the news. Mm -hmm. The president needs to come to Congress, and it's on his shoulders now to bring us whatever his plan. He's obviously had a huge change of heart about Syria. No longer an apologist for Bashar al-Assad wants to take action. He's got to lay the plan out on the table so that Congress can debate it and vote on it. But Senator, isn't it true that the president was able to do this because you guys let him? You ducked your constitutional no. authority to declare war. Ben Cardin was just on saying, yeah, I think he did the right thing. I got contacted. That's not how it's supposed to work. But that's how you and Congress let no, it work. You're, you're wrong. He took this action without talking to people. If he, if he had come Cardin to us knew, and said, I want to... Other members if of he Congress had, knew. They could have so stood up and tried for, to block for, it. They didn't. For, you can't say... Chris, you know this. You can't say I talked to three or four members of Congress and then I launched a war unilaterally. But where was this Congress trying to war. stop it before it happened? Who stood this up? This is an act. Well, he, this, he did this unannounced, Chris. The Constitution is very clear. Whatever you think of Congress, the Constitution is clear. Congress declares war. If you let a president just do it unilaterally whenever he wakes up and thinks it's a good idea, you're going to have chaos. And the reason you do a war declaration is two, threefold. First, it's what the Constitution requires. Second, we shouldn't put our troops in harm's way without a political consensus that the mission is worth it. And third, when you have a debate in Congress over a war, you bring the American public in so that they understand the stakes and that they feel invested in it as well. That's what President Trump should have done. He told President Obama to do it in 2013, but as soon as he has the opportunity, he just blows by the constitutional requirement. He's got to come up to Congress and put a plan on the table so that we can see where this is going. I hear you on this. And I know that you have been an advocate to debate the authorization for use of military force anew. You have pointed out that it doesn't make sense anymore. But you have to own that the House and the Senate have wilted on this issue time can, can and I, again Chris, since can, Reagan, can, Bush, Chris, Clinton, Clinton, Bush. And, and you've Chris, allowed let me them say to, to abuse you, it. Chris, let me say to you, so what? Is the, does the Constitution matter? 
Does it matter? It says that Congress needs to declare war. And that's what Donald Trump said when he was a citizen. When President Obama wanted to use military action against Syria, he knew he couldn't do it on his own to wage war against a sovereign nation. So he came to Congress. President Trump's got to do the same thing. Since the Trump administration started, listen what's happened. First American ground operations in Yemen. First American ground operations against ISIL in Syria. Now war strikes against the Syrian government. All these things are happening without a congressional debate. It's time for us to get in the game. I, I share your frustration. And no, if no, anything, I don't have frustration I, I was, about it. I don't I was, have frustration. I was, I, I you was guys love to put President it on the media. Was, it's not a subjective I, judgment. What can, I'm saying is can this, I say Senator, this? I know where you've been on President it. Obama I'm, about this, I know you and did. I'm hard on President Trump about it. I, I, know, I know you did. I know you are. I get it. But what I'm asking you to do is own the collective for a moment, because you know that that 2001 AUMF doesn't even come close to support, supporting actions that have been taken by multiple presidents now. I, I completely agree with you. I but, completely agree with you. But they allowed it. Congress shirked their duty under this. Well, you, you can't expect you know, a president to turn down power. If you would give them a, a power, no. they're not going to say no. It's I, on you guys as much. Did, did, he, did he take an oath to uphold the Constitution? So did you press? guys. And, and we are. I have introduced an authorization with respect to the war against ISIL, and if he'll come to us, and I have voted to use military action against Syria for using chemical weapons against civilians. But as of now, there is, as you point out, there is no congressional authorization that covers this, and that means we've got to bring it and have the debate. I'm as hard on my colleagues as I am on both the Obama and Trump administrations. But, but he took an oath to the Constitution, as did we, and he needs to follow it. But there is a pattern of allowing it. Now, I, I, look, I'll agree with you. What Rubio was saying, I don't know that those are compelling legal arguments, but it never matters because you guys won't debate it. And we just had Ben Cardin on. We haven't heard from a Harry Reid. Can I, can I say know, something? They when never you say, speak up about this. When you say it doesn't matter, I know you're kind of blasting Congress. It matters. There's 1.6 million families like mine that have a kid in the military. True. It matters. You can't put people into harm's way without a political consensus. I and agree. Has to risk their lives. Objectively. It matters. And even if we are acting like it doesn't matter, it matters. But then so we why ought to get don't it right. you guys and convene so, a debate on it? You and I have discussed well, this on the show before. Because there were opportunities have, have, to do it and it hasn't been done. No, it has been done on numerous occasions. I introduced an authorization that got a floor, that got a vote in the Foreign Relations Committee in December of 2014. Right. The Republicans would not support it. They said, wait till we take over the majority. We want to take it up when we have the majority. Right. And the next month started. We introduced an authorization. President Obama brought an authorization to Congress. They've refused to right. take That's it up. That's my point. I am, it keeps so, not but, happening. That's what but, I'm saying. But, Constitutionally, okay. there's supposed to be a debate. It hasn't happened. If it does happen then, now, would you authorize what the president has just started in I, Syria? I can certainly see voting yes, just as I did on 2013, but I want to understand what the president's plan is, because I think it's really important. The difference between now and 2013 is there's a lot of differences. One, there's American troops on the ground there. Two, Russia's in, and they weren't in 2013. Three, the Turks and the Kurds are engaging in, in significant challenges on the battlefield space. I'll tell you what I think we should do, and I hope the administration will put this on the table. I think we should still establish a humanitarian zone in northern Syria to enforce the UN Security Council resolution that Senator Rubio was talking about, and that we should do it as a humanitarian zone and protect it with military assets if anybody tries to mess up the humanitarian mission. I think that's what we should do. I've been calling for it for nearly three years. I am heartened that the administration has taken this seriously. But, but Chris, let's get this right. It's the start of a new administration. We, it, it, with a new administration, we got an opportunity to get this right. And that's why my colleagues and I, Senator Flake and Senator McCain and I, are trying to restart the AUMF discussion. Mm -hmm. But the discussion we're having was about ISIS. Right. That would not cover action against the sovereign nation of Syria. There's going to have to be a separate discussion about that. Logically, uh, that would make sense. But can you at least acknowledge that you, McCain, a handful of others, are an exception, not the rule? That since that Sadly, vote for the war in Iraq that so many have had to pay a price for, in general... Congress has shirked its constitutional duty to own declarations of war, and you've ceded power to presidents who are only too happy to take it, which is understandable.
Press, I will, I will agree with you now. I'm, I'm with you. This has been primarily an abdication of responsibility by Congress. But just because Congress has abdicated in the past doesn't mean that a president can start a new war and say, well, I don't even need to go to Congress now. The constitutional command is clear. He should be putting an authorization on the table before Congress. And we will see whether now, with a new president and two Republican houses, will Congress continue to abdicate or not. But there's no excuse for bypassing Congress, because the Constitution that we all pledge an oath to is very, very plain that except for defending the nation against imminent attack, you can't start a war without an act of Congress. Well, look, you're laying out all the right points, and we will be watching very carefully what Good. happens next. Senator, thank you for making the case on you New Day. Chris.